All right, now um, on to a really important element of data manipulation, data cleaning, data management, whatever you want to call it, which is sort of aggregating and summarizing data, right? Sometimes you want to summarize data across a long list of rows and condense it um, and save it in a new data set or, or, or a table later on. This is what's called sort of aggregating and, and, and summarizing. And we're going to do this with some great data. I have students um, you know, in universities and I have data on their grades every year. Um, and we actually want to save a data set where we look at the average grade for students um, for a particular breakdown. So this is the example. Let's open R and jump in. Um, again, I have some, from, some code prepared here. Uh, let's look at the grade point average of students in the year 2010. This is the variable GPA 2010. Let's get the, um, the average for it using the summary function and we'll see, well, it doesn't really work because the class of this variable is actually a character. So again, as in previous sessions, we need to convert it. Um, we're going to do this using the mutate function and the as numeric functions. So this is a recap of, of an earlier video. Let's apply that to change the type of the GPA 2010 variable into a numeric form. If we do that and reapply the summary command, we now see, okay, you actually get the statistics you want. You get a mean, minimum, maximum. And you see that the grades of all students in the data set, the thousand students that we have vary from somewhere between zero to um, 4.9. Uh, and the mean is 1.9, so almost, almost a two. Let's assume this is a German grading scale where one is really good and six is um, terrible. So a mean of a two is pretty good. All right, so let's, let's see how we can get the mean. We can use the mean functions that's part of base R, which just says mean brackets, then define the column inside the data frame that you that you'd like. Um, note that we're not in the piping framework here, right? We haven't told R yet which data frame we want to work with in this particular line of code. So we gotta we gotta tell them uh, we gotta tell R that we want the student's data frame and within it the column GPA 2010. And this option here, na.rm equals true, means that we want R to not consider missing values, right? Because if you take a mean and there are empty values in that uh, in certain rows, um, R is gonna have a tr trouble considering that when calculating the mean, the average, right? So we're gonna exclude them. And we see uh, we get the same value here that we do when we when we use the summary function. Now let's create a new variable um, that contains the mean for all students. All right, and um, we you do that using the summarize command. All right, so we use the student's data frame and then we use summarize create a mean variable, it's a name of a new variable in there, that equals function mean of the grades in 2010 and not considering missings. So let's run that and see what happens. We get the same. This is now a sort of a data frame, a tibble, but with only one value, which is the mean of all students. Okay. What if you want to get the mean by a certain group? Let's, let's assume we want to get the average for students for each course that they're taking, right? Because each course may have a different instructor that grades differently and different courses are going to be harder or, or easier. So we want to actually get the grades for all of the students for, for by each course. We're going to do this using the group by function, which is an incredibly powerful and important function through the remainder of this course. So we're going to tell our... Um, you know, look at the student's data frame and now we group by course. So this is the variable that we want to break down things by. So we group by the course variable and then again, and then pipe operator, we summarize and um, we summarize in a way that we create a new variable, which is called mean, that is equal to the mean of the grades in 2010. So let's see what that looks like. And we actually see now here a list of all courses and they're corresponding the average grade of students in those courses, right? Now we can also sort it. We've, we've learned how that goes um, beforehand using the range function. And we add that 
element by using a pipe operator. Okay, so now we have a list of all courses and the average grade of students by um, the average grade point average in that course. And we see apparently the best, students perform the best in macro one class and the worst in class on institutions. All right. Okay, we can also now save that um, table or that new data set, if you will, in a new data frame. And we do that by defining a new object, which is a data frame, that is equal to students, then group by, then creating the average and arranging it, right? I've already run that command. So if you go to the environment here, you see a new data frame that appeared, which is called course grade. And it looks like this. It has now 23 rows and two columns and the variable in the column mean is now the mean grade of all students in that particular course. All right. Now you can also not only group by one variable for each course, you can also group by a number of different variables, right? And, and get, for example, the grades for each course in each faculty, uh, faculty. We have some nested data here where students are enrolled in courses, the courses take place at faculties, and the faculties are in the university, right? So it's kind of a nested environment. And we can group the, the grades also by, um, by faculty and course. And we do this by just adding a term in the group by function and splitting it up by a, a comma. So if we run the same um, code, we're just adding the faculty um, grouping, the data now looks like this. If we go back to course grade, now we actually have here the, um, the faculty and then each course within the faculty and the average grade. So this might be quite useful, right? If imagine you're working for the university president and they say, well, I want to get you know, the average grade of students for every course and I want to look at it for, for the separate uh, uh, faculties, then this is, this is a list you could export it to Excel and then report it. Okay. Now you can also add the number of observations as a separate variable, right? Because now we have the mean, but we don't, we, we now lost the information of how many students are actually in each course, right? And, and, and that could have an effect of the mean that we're looking at. If they're just two students and you're building the mean of two, it's going to be less reliable than, um, than is if there were 200 students. So what we want to do is actually add the number of students per each course. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's the same as just adding the number of rows, because one row is one student, adding the number of rows by certain groups. And um, R has a shortcut for that um, using, using the N function. N is always associated with sample or number of observations. So the, 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 code, the code is basically the same, but in addition to the mean that we're creating, we also, after the comma, add a new variable called ops for observations, which is equal to, and then we list the N function. The N function counts the rows, okay? And then we use the pipe operator and arrange again. Let's see what that data frame looks like. We run it. Let's look at it again. Okay. Right. So now we have business leadership mean ops. So this means that in the leadership course in the business faculty, the average grade is 1.7 and 66 students participated in that course. Okay. You already see how the summarizing works and aggregating information by, by different groups. Now let's recap some comments, uh, some commands and some functions from, from, from earlier. And we actually want to reduce our data set in uh, just a few variables, right? Faculty course GPA. You know how to do that. We use the select function here. We um, override the compare grades data frame by just a selection of those three variables from the student's data set. Okay. Compare grades. Here you have it. This is the new data set. Now we want to create a new variable that contains the mean grade in 2010 for all students. All right. We, we do this using the mutate command and then creating a new variable, which is the mean, and then using the mean function of grades to create that mean. OK. 
Okay, so compare grades now has its original structure. We did not summarize or aggregate yet, right? We keep the same number of rows, but we add a new variable which contains the mean across the rows, the mean grade, right, for all students. Now we want to get a mean for the fac by faculty, right, where students are enrolled. Because in the end, we want to actually compare how students are doing compared to the average in their faculty, but also compared to the average across the whole school. Right? That's the aim here. So we're going to create a new variable of the mean at the faculty by adding a group by function with faculty. Okay? And again, you see we have the overall mean, now we have the faculty mean. And we could start comparing whether uh, you know, people, people's grade is sort of higher or lower than the overall mean or the mean in their respective faculty. Now we want to also create a, a variable for the mean by course, right? To have that um, relative comparison as well. Again, same code, just adding the new grouping variable here, which is course. And again, um, remember that creating new variables you can do with the mutate command. Now we want to summarize this data set. We have now three means and the original grade here for each student in the data set. Still a thousand students in there, right? So now we're going to group by the faculty and the course, and we create the number of students in the data set with the n function, and we're going to uh, get the mean of uh, the faculty, okay? The mean of the course and the overall mean. Okay. So now you see the overall data frame is much shorter. It's now summarized and aggregated. We now only have 29 rows. This is the combination of faculties and courses that exists, okay? There are overall 23 courses and they take place in different faculties. And now we have here the number of students in each course. We have the mean of the grades in the corresponding faculty, in the business faculty. We have the mean within the course and we have the mean overall. So, so for example, students in the accounting course perform worse than students on average in the faculty, okay? So maybe the accounting course is a little bit more difficult than, than other courses there. All right, now, like we did previously, we can condense this course, uh, this code dramatically, right? We can make it shorter and have it all in one go. Rather than creating a mean and then replacing that data set, creating a new mean, you can do it all in one go using um, the piping operator right? The end then operator. The only new element here is that each time we group something, we group the data and we create something new, for example, the average bio course, we need to tell R to ungroup the data, okay? Otherwise it keeps the same grouping. So we ungroup the data as a separate function using ungroup. Then we group again by new variable, create the new uh, mean and ungroup again. And lastly, we summarize. So all of, all of which we've done above is now condensed here in this line of code.